Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to iGaming Club. I'm Sai, and this is the very first episode of Let's Indie series. If you guys haven't checked the intro video yet, there is a link in the description for it. Make sure to check it out. It has everything you need to know about the series and the syllabus as well. Now, this episode is about designing the very first level of our game, and more important, it will have the implementation for all the other levels as well. Now, where do we start? Well, level design is about laying down the elements of your game in a good way and arranging them to give the player the best possible experience while gaming, which means that we need to know all our elements. So before we start level design, we need to put a list of our elements. Now what are the meaning of an element? Well, an element differ from one game to another. In our game, for an example, an element will be an obstacle, or a trap, or a specific enemy type, whether it's ranged or melee. We can draw another example for an element by studying the environment, which means we need to know where the game is taking place. And for that, we need to know the story of our game, from which we will be extracting all the elements of the game. Now most game studios have story writers, but like I said, we will be doing this as indies. So I've already put together a story for our game, it's not the best story ever, but it's something to work out. And we can always add, delete, or even refine that story along the Muslim faith. The game is about a warrior who's trying to unite all the tribes of his world. Now the tribes will be represented by the environment, meaning a tribe of forests, a tribe for the ice, or a tribe for the fire, stuff like that. So for a starter, I've decided to have 10 environments, where there is 5 levels in each environment, 3 normal levels, and 2 unique levels for the mini boss and the big boss. Now what's the difference between mini boss and big boss levels? The mini boss level will be the same as a normal level, except it will have a boss at the end of it. While the big boss level will have nothing but the boss. Now we need to decide what type of games do we want to make. Is it a mystery solving based game or is it a combat game? Should it involve lots of running with no goals for it? Now for my game, I want it to be based around hitting so much keys to perform attack combos or movement combos. So it will be mostly focused on attacking and killing enemies and mechanics passing as well. Now it's time to choose our environment. Now because I love forest environment so much, and also because forest doesn't have so many advanced modeling techniques, I have decided to go with a forest environment. Now that we have a place for the first set of levels, we need to scope that level, meaning how many elements do we have in our game. To make it simpler, we will start by duration. For how long should the player be able to play the game? I would enjoy to play a 10 minutes level probably, where I can just pause the game after each environment and come back to it later. Which means, this way I will have approximately between 50 minutes to 1 hour for each environment, giving me a 10 hours gameplay for the game, which is a decent duration for an indie game. Now bear in mind that the player shouldn't be just running for 10 minutes. In fact, let's think for how long should it take the player to finish the whole level running with no obstacles, no enemy, or any elements whatsoever. I would say 2 minutes is a good answer. So let's change that concept from time or duration to lengths or units. Now our player will have the ability to cover 8 units under 1 second, meaning that his speed will be 8 units per second. The duration of 2 minutes level 120 seconds multiplied by 8 units will give us the length of each level, which would be 960 units. 960 units are so much to be designed all at once, so let's split them into sections, let's say 4 sections. 960 units divided by 4 sections will give us 240 units for each section, which is still a big amount of units. So again, let's divide them into smaller areas, say 4 areas again. 240 units divided by 4 areas will give us 60 units for each area, which will take the player 7.5 seconds to cover one area with no elements by just running. Now that we know the length of each area, let's decide the type of areas in our game. We know that our game is about fighting monsters, by passing some obstacles, performing mechanics, and avoiding traps. That will give us 4 types of areas. Combat areas, obstacle areas, mechanic areas, and trap areas. I would also like to have a secret area. Now bear in mind that the secret area will not take a space from our main 16 areas, as it may not be included in every level, and it will not have a fixed path to it. In fact, the player will have to work hard to find that area. 
Now we have 16 areas to fill and 4 types of areas. We can simply repeat each area 4 times throughout the level or we can do what is called ratio between areas. Now why do we need ratio? I know you may think we should go the first way but the game will have no characteristics meaning no one will know the type of your game or at least the main type of your game. Now as I have mentioned, I want my game to be focused around combat, so I want a bigger ratio for combat. So let's say I want to give the combat areas a ratio of 40%, that will give me 60% for the rest of the areas. I like to have them like that, 25 for the obstacles, 20% for the mechanics and just 15% for the traps, which would give us about 7 areas for the combat, 4 areas for obstacles, 3 areas for mechanics and 2 areas for the traps. Now let's start by spreading the areas. As you can see, I've decided to have 2 combat areas in each section, with only 1 in the second section with a maximum of 3 areas without fight, and a possibility of 2 areas of combat neighboring each other. And for the obstacle areas, I've decided to go with 1 area in each section. For the mechanic areas, I've decided to do the same with one mechanic area for each section except section 4. And for the trap areas, I've decided to go with the third section and the fourth section. Now that we know the types and the ratio of our areas and the arrangement of them, we should dig even deeper and think about what elements will make each area unique than any other area. For an example, we will have four areas for the obstacle. So we need four unique examples for the obstacle. This is before your eyes a simple slide that I came up with for the elements of the first level. As you can see, there are two types of enemies, a ranged one, the ape, and another melee one, a wolf. As for the obstacles, there will be thorny plants that will harm you during passing close to them, a swamp that will suck you in if walked on it, a laser beam that will try to lock the player and shoot it down, a beer trap that will push the player back approximately 1.5 units and apply damage to him. Then for the mechanics, you will have a wall covered with grass, and the player will have to perform some actions to climb it. Some winging groups where the player must jump from one group to another while adjusting his height as well. Double jump where the player must climb two walls close to each other with specific mechanics that we'll be discussing later. Here's a spoiler from the game though. He will be doing that using his sword and his shield. And now for the traps. There's something you need to know about the traps. And the difference between a trap and an obstacle is that the player may dodge an obstacle or ignore it and just take the damage. But a trap will always block the player passage and hence the player will always have to face it and solve it as well. We will have what is called static laser beam. Where there will be static laser rays that will be blocking the passage of the player. And for that the player must come up with a way to overcome that static laser rays or block them from the source. Next, there will be a wild swamp, it's basically another swamp, but this time there is no ropes to jump over it. So the player will have to use the environment and come up with a way to move on. Next, there will be a wild swamp, it's basically another swamp, but this time there is no ropes to jump over it. So the player will have to use the environment and come up with a way to move on. Now for the last tip, speeding our elements in a well organized way. So let's head to Photoshop and do some sketching. We will be creating a new file with the width of 1600 pixels since we have 16 area and a height of probably 70. Then we will collect some samples of the elements from the internet. As you can see, I have already collected some of them. Now let's split our workspace into areas, 16 areas. This will be the amount of the section. And this will be our area.
and you just repeat this process. I'll just speed forward. Here we go. Now let's spread our elements for the first section. As you can see here in the Photoshop, I have spread all my elements for the first section. I want you guys to do the rest of the sections and tell me what would they be. And I will be doing it on your own way because like I said, it is not just my game, it is our game. Now I have used the main elements that we discussed with adding some deformation to the environment as you can see right here. This is for the wall of grass. Before your eyes there are some trees and we will also be having birds, rocks, some bushes and maybe a couple of moving animals in the background to give the player some feeling that it is a forest. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and stay tuned for the next episode where we will be modeling the elements of the forest. And for those of you who are not good at modeling, there will also be a new series published as well for modeling. Stay tuned for it. If you guys like my videos, just hit the like down below and let me know. And if you wish to see more about my videos, just hit the subscribe button down below. See you guys next episode.